Hydraulic disc brakes can be a right pain when it comes to maintenance, although perhaps not as bad as you first thought. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to shorten a set of Shimano hydraulic hoses and then bleed them in the easiest way possible. First things first, why would you want to shorten the hydraulic hoses on your disc brake bike? Well, if you've got your bike brand new, typically the hoses come pretty damn long so that there's plenty of scope to make adjustments and get your position dialed in. It also maybe means that you could have changed to a narrow handlebar, a narrow stem, or changed the stack height of your bike. Once you've got your position dialed in, you may well find that the hoses are a little bit long, which looks a bit messy and also could lead to them rubbing on the frame. The solution? Cut them a little bit shorter. Now the process I'm going to show you on this bike only applies to Shimano spec bikes, but the principles are pretty similar for other bikes too. On a bike with fully integrated and hidden hoses, a job like this isn't really going to be a thing. But if you've got a bike where sections of the hoses are exposed, either just at the front of the bike or the whole way through, this job could really help tidy up your bike. So what do you need to do this job? Well, you're going to need a bleed kit for Shimano brakes. So that consists of a syringe with a hose, an external reservoir, an adapter, a spanner, a caliper block, and of course, some fresh fluid. It's also a good advice to have some gloves as well. You're also going to need some electrical tape, scissors, a tray or container to have some oily mess and parts go into, a cloth, some disc brake cleaner or alcohol to tidy it all up, a suitable tool to cut the hoses and install the new fittings. This one is one of my favourites from Park Tools, but there's loads of different options to choose from. You're also going to need a new barb and compression fitting. Shimano have got two different options here. You've got the BH90 or the B59. This is typically stamped onto the hoses, but if you look up the caliper model code online, you'll be able to find out what you need. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put your bike up into the work stamp and get the wheels removed. Clearly, you can see I've already done that. This is actually Chloe's bike, and I've been meaning for absolutely ages to cut the hoses down because they're a little bit long. So, let's dive straight into it. First step is to carefully remove the top section of bar tape and then pull back the rubber lever hood cover. You can then remove any tape which is holding the hoses to the handlebars. Now that the hoses are not attached, you can undo the flare nuts to separate the hose from the lever body. At this stage, you're going to have something which looks a little bit like this. You might also have a little bit of fluid which has leaked out, but fear not, you can just clean it up with your cloth. Now, what we need to do now is assess how much of this brake hose we want to cut off. And the crucial thing to get right is to make sure you don't cut it too short because you can't stick it back on. If you do do that, well, you're going to need to replace the whole brake hose, which is a right pain. Now, the principle that we want to get right and how to achieve the correct hose length is to make sure that it's short enough to look neat and tidy, but also long enough that when you turn the handlebars to the extreme points either way, there's no excessive tension put onto the hose and it certainly doesn't try to make it kink. So what we want to do is hold the hose in place and guess roughly where you think you can position it and make your cut. And then once you're holding it in place nicely, sit it into the groove under your handlebar if it has one. Then you can rotate the handlebars all the way around and make sure at no point does um, this hose come into any harm. This looks about right. So what I can do here is probably cut a good maybe inch off of this but remember you can't cut it really really short because the barb is poking in up to about this point here so that's what we're going to do next cut it down to do that i'm back we're going to use our uh, hose cutting and barb insertion tool god i love this one it's so nice <laughs> Now it's important when you cut the brake hose, you want a nice clean flush finish because in a minute we're going to insert a new one of these little barbs here. And what you want is for this to be able to sit in and sit really neat and flush. That way we're going to have no problems when we come to bleeding the brakes and we certainly don't want to be leaking any fluid out of here. So that's going to be the next thing we do. Insert the barb, put our compression fitting on and then I'll show you what it all needs to look like before we put it back together. new barb and compression fitting over the hose. What we're gonna do now is slide our flare nut back up the hose and 
pretty much recreate what it is that we've cut off. So we can then push the new hose back into the lever and do this flare nut up. Now Shimano recommend, I think, a torque setting of between five and seven Newton meters, which is what I suggest you do as well. However, I can't say I've ever specifically followed that, but as I said, I suggest you do. Minor update, it's actually five to six Newton meters. It's written directly in front of my face, whatever. Um, next thing to do is to put the hose up neat and tidy underneath the handlebars and root it back how it was as you took it apart. So most handlebars have a little groove and underneath, which is what we've got here, where we can take our electrical tape and tape it all back together neat and tidy before we start to put the bar tape back up and then move on to the next job, which is bleeding the brakes. But fear not, it's not actually that complicated. So brake hose installed back on the bike, bar tape back on, and as you can see, we really haven't cut much off of the hose. I do want to stress, you really don't want to cut the hoses too short. It's really a case of just me showing you the process and kind of peace of mind that I've made it ever so slightly tidier. Next thing that we need to do is bleed the brakes. As I've already said, it's not as bad as you probably first thought. The first step of the process is going to be to remove the brake pads from the back and install the brake bleed block into the caliper. To do this, you need to position the bike so the brake lever bleed port is horizontal. You can then remove the brake pads and install the brake bleed block into the caliper. Up at the lever, undo the small bleed port cover and carefully attach the reservoir, making sure that the plunger is blocking up the hole. Fill the syringe with fresh fluid. Now Shimano brakes use mineral oil and it's important to make sure you get no air inside the syringe. Attach the syringe onto the brake caliper bleed nipple and undo the bleed nipple about one turn. And then gently use the syringe to push fresh fluid through the system until the top of the reservoir is nearly full. Now close the caliper bleed port securely and remove the syringe, setting it to one side. Pump the brake lever a few times to check that it no longer pulls all the way back to the handlebars. Plug the reservoir again, remove it carefully and set it to one side, taking care not to spill any fluid. Replace the small cover on the lever ports and use any alcohol, disc brake cleaner and your cloth to wipe up any mess, either at the caliper and up at the lever. It's also important to make sure not to over tighten the screw. Shimano simply recommends less than one Newton meter here. You can then pull the rubber hood cover back into place. Next, refit your brake pads followed by the wheels before pulling the brake lever on and off a few times to allow the brakes to self-adjust and double check they work okay. You're pretty much ready to go. Unless, of course, you want to shorten the hose for the other brake, in which case, repeat the whole process over again. So that shows you the whole process of what you need to do, and there's no doubt about it, it is more faff and more involved than cable brakes, especially if they're rim brakes, but hey, that's just life. Um, what you do need to make sure to do is discard carefully of any old brake fluid at like a local recycling or waste center don't go just pouring it down the drains. That would be awful. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much this job wrapped up. As I've said, repeat the process for the other side if you need to. And do let me know in the comments section down below what kind of maintenance task you might like to see in the future. And also let me know perhaps what you find the most frustrating maintenance job on your bike. Right, man of this. See you later.